this is an example of a limiting reactant problem. Limiting reactant problems follow a very standard um, set of steps, which I'm going to show you. Um, first thing we're going to do is write a balanced chemical reaction if it's not given in the problem. The second thing we're going to do, very important, is to make a plan. Don't ever skip that step. The next thing we're going to do is once we know what we're looking for, we're going to calculate the mass of the target compound using one of the reactants. And then we're going to calculate the mass of the target compound using the second reactant. Once we have those two calculations done, we're going to compare the results and use that information to determine which limit, which is the limiting reactant and which is the excess reactant. The last thing you're going to do is um, answer any additional questions based off of the limiting reactant. Sometimes these questions have extra things like how much excess reactant is left over or how much of the other products are formed. So all of those things are based off the limiting reactant. All right, so let's get started. <clears throat> so in this problem, we have butane gas reacting with oxygen in a combustion reaction. So we're going to produce carbon dioxide and water. Well, I'm going to show, I've already written the chemical reaction for this one. This one is um, a typical combustion reaction, and it has a pretty high coefficients. doesn't matter. We're going to use those in the molar ratio. All right, the next thing we're going to do is make a plan. Well, here's our chemical reaction again, but with the information given in the problem. We're told that we have 19 grams of butane and 18.6 grams of oxygen. So that is the earmark of a limiting reactant problem because you're given a quantity of each of the two reactants in the chemical reaction. Um, the question says, what is the maximum mass of carbon dioxide that could be produced? So uh, what we're trying to find out is the number of grams of carbon dioxide. So we're going to do two stoichiometry problems. We're going to start with grams of butane and calculate grams of CO2. And then we're going to start with grams of oxygen and calculate the grams of CO2. All right, so let's start with the butane. All right, this looks, I split this up into three separate steps. So if we have 19 grams of butane, first thing we need to do is change from grams to moles of the butane. The next thing we're going to do is use the mole ratio from the balanced equation. So convert from moles of butane to moles of CO2. So for every mole, eight moles of CO2 produced, there needs to be two moles of butane reacted. Once you know the moles of butane produced, I mean, sorry, moles of carbon dioxide produced, we're going to change from moles of carbon dioxide to grams. So our final answer here is if all the butane reacts completely, then we're going to get 57.5 grams of carbon dioxide. Okay, so that's our first reactant. Now we're going to do the same calculation starting with oxygen. All right, so here we go. Now we're going to calculate the mass of the target compound, which in this case is carbon dioxide, starting with the oxygen. So we are start with 18.6 grams of oxygen, and we're going to change that from grams to moles. Then we're going to use the mole ratio to change from moles of oxygen to moles of CO2. So in this case, there's 8 moles of CO2 produced for every 13 moles of oxygen that react. The next thing we're going to do is change from moles of carbon dioxide to grams. So that third step is the same as it was in the previous um, calculation. All right, so when we do all of that, we find out that if all of the oxygen reacts completely, then we get 15.7 grams of carbon dioxide produced. Okay. So far, so good. We've got two answers. Now we need to compare the two answers to figure out the limiting reactant. So if all of the oxygen reacts, then we actually have a smaller mass of carbon dioxide produced. So therefore, it, the oxygen must be the limiting reactant. If all the butane reacts completely, it produces a larger mass of carbon dioxide. So that tells us that butane, in this case, is the excess reactant. So oxygen is going to run out first, 
butane will be left over after the reaction is done. So now that we know that, we can answer any additional questions. So the problem specifically asks for the maximum amount of carbon dioxide that can be produced. Well, in this case, we already calculated that because we did both the limiting reactant and the target compound at the same time. So in this case, the maximum mass of, that should be carbon dioxide, not butane, produced will be 16 grams. So that's the amount that was generated from the limiting reactant. Now we could go on to figure out how much of the excess reactant was um, left over if we wanted to use, so if we want to do that, we start with the limiting reactant, figure out how much of the other reactant was actually needed, and then we can subtract that from the amount of the excess reactant available. And that is it.